Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is about counting atoms, one of the most fundamental and important parts of chemistry, and I'm going to teach you a pretty easy way to do it. So follow along. When you see something like this, that's kind of intimidating. It's uh, how do you break it down? What is it they're telling you? How do you figure out what they need? Well, that's what we're going to go through today. So we're going to talk about chemistry's language and shorthand. Um, when I was a kid, people learned shorthand. It was a short, uh, quick way of writing down what somebody was dictating or saying. Now we use voice recorders. So we don't really have shorthand, but we try to, we, we have um, texting and LOL or, you know, um, R-O-T-F-L, rolling on the floor laughing or something like that. We do have shorthand. So this is chemistries. The first thing you need to know is every element has a symbol. One or two letters. If it's two letters, the first letter is always uppercase. The second letter is always lowercase. It not only needs to be up lowercase, it needs to look lowercase. And that's the symbol, that's an abbreviation. So as you can see on this one, we have calcium, phosphorus, and oxygen. You may not have known that, but you can see there's one, two, three different symbols or three different abbreviations there. Then we have a thing called a subscript. And a subscript is below and to the right of the thing that it's talking about. It's kind of like an exponent in that if you had 3x squared, that square only acts on the x. It doesn't act on the 3. Well, that's what it is for this. This 3 only acts on the calcium. It doesn't act on anything else. This 2, however, acts on the whole thing in the parentheses. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. So when I have H2O, that tells you there's two hydrogens and one oxygen. And the prefix sub means below. Like if you have a sub-basement or a sub-level in your house, sub means below, script means writing. So it's writing that's below, not above. So please don't call it an exponent, but know that in some respects, in a very loose way, it acts very similar to an exponent in that it only acts on the thing immediately preceding it. So let's talk about those parentheses. If you have a, a, um, a subscript outside of the parentheses, it acts on everything in the parentheses. Again, kind of like an exponent. If I had three times four x squared, and the 4x was in parentheses and the square was outside, that would mean it would be 3 times 4x times 4x. So the square works on everything inside the parentheses. And so it is with a subscript. Ca3 means I have three calciums. And PO42, with the subscript 2, outside the parentheses means I have PO4, PO4. I have two of these little puppies called PO4. And that's really important that you get that down now because it's going to build. You know, chemistry is cumulative, so it's just going to build on that. So CA3, 1, 2, 3, PO4, 2, PO4, PO4. Now another thing we talk in chemistry about is a coefficient. And a coefficient is this number that goes right in front. Up until this point, we've not messed around with that number. And again, we won't for a little bit, but a coefficient tells you how many of these things called H2O we have? So if we got rid of the two and we just looked at H2O, we know that it's two hydrogens and one oxygen. Then we, excuse me, then we look at our coefficient and we see that we have two of those, two sets of these things called H2O. Ready for some examples? Good. So we have Ca3PO42. How many calciums do you have? Three. How many phosphorus do we have? Two. And how many oxygens? We actually have eight because it's PO4 taken twice. And let's see if I can find the right slide. Here we go. Four, eight. If I drew those out, I'd have four O's and four O's. So you'd see it is eight O's, but all you have to do is multiply. Now there's a little invisible one here next to this P. Remember, scientists are basically lazy. So we don't write it, but it's understood. So it's one times two, that tells you how many P's, and four times two, that tells you how many O's. Then you add them up, and it looks to me like that's 13, 13 total atoms. Another example, three Na2SO4. How many sodiums? This tells you how many sodiums we have two. Now we're not worried about the three yet. We're just looking at the two, the subscript. Two sodiums, how many S's? We're gonna multiply it by the four. Nope, because we don't have parentheses. And that four only acts on the thing immediately preceding it. So how many S's? We have one. How many O's? That's where your four is, we have four. So we have two, three, plus four, makes seven altogether. 
seven atoms in one of those, but our coefficient tells us we have three of those. So if there's seven in one, there must be 21 in three. So in three sets, there's 21 atoms. And it's important that you do them in order. First, figure out the amount for one, and then multiply it by your coefficient. Let's do one last example. 4PBNO3 taken twice. How much lead? One. Again, we're going to ignore the coefficient, ignore the four for right now, pretend like it's not even there. There's a little invisible one right here. Notice that this two only acts on the things in the parentheses, not the thing before the parentheses. So it's like as if there's a little one right there. So there's one lead. How much nitrogen? Two. Again, there's an invisible one there, but you have to do one times two. And one times two is two. How much oxygen? Six. Three times two. Three times two is six. Six oxygens. So if I add that all up, one and two is three, and six is nine. I have nine atoms in one molecule. But you'll see that I've been asked for four. My coefficient is four. Once I find out how much is in one, then I go to my coefficient, multiply nine times four, and I get 36 atoms in this whole thing. So your total number of atoms is 36. That's how you count atoms.